This phone cost 853,000 pounds. Yup, this one with a giant lobster on it. And you thought iPhones were expensive. Salvador Dali was a Spanish surrealist who made some of the craziest art in the early 1900s. He's mostly known for his classic paintings, soft construction with boiled beans, the first days of spring, and the lugubrious game. If you haven't caught on from the paintings, he was a weird dude. And also a genius. I honestly wish I'd been his friend. because you know those conversations were crazy with a capital K. It all started in 1935 when Salvador Dali was commissioned by the magazine American Weekly. They asked him to do a series of drawings showing his very first impressions of New York City. I know, I know, it makes so much sense now. Lobsters in New York, of course. Seriously though. Dali was weird. When Dali's drawings were released, one of the captions from one of the drawings was, New York dream, man finds lobster instead of phone. And another said, lobster aphrodisiac. And the drawing was of a regular phone with a dead lobster on it, surrounded by flies. Because nothing screams mommy daddy time like a dead rotting lobster. The surrealist movement was all about taking things that don't belong together, but had similar themes to them and melding them them into one piece of weirdness that became really famous art. Don't get me wrong, I could never paint or draw anything nearly as interesting as Dali. In Salvador Dali's mind, lobsters and telephones had a strong sexual connotation. Lobsters especially, so much so that in another drawing of Dali's called The Dream of Venus, he drew women whose bathing suit areas were only covered by lobsters. Initially, when telephones and lobsters began to grace Dali's paint people thought it was a statement about luxury and the ultra upper class things that he had seen in his exploration of interior design others thought that maybe it was a beautiful mix of what a prehistoric animal like the lobster would be like mixed with the modern technology of the telephone but no it seems like Dali was just thinking about other things in an incomprehensible attempt to elaborate on his reasonings for the drawings he said I do not understand why when I'm asked for a grilled lobster at a restaurant, I am never served a cooked telephone. I do not understand why champagne is always chilled and on the other hand, telephones which are habitually so frightfully warm and disagreeably sticky to the touch are not also put in silver buckets with crushed ice around them. I never would have thought of that and he's kind of not wrong. The concept of the lobster phone had been brewing in Dali's mind for four years already. Since 1931, when he went through a phase of being fascinated with interior design. He had wanted to branch out from just drawings and paintings to real life surrealism that could be brought into the real world for normal non-geniuses to ponder and think about and enjoy. After these initial drawings were published, another surrealist poet by the name of Sir Edward James and his portrait of him should tell you pretty much everything you need to know about him, fell in love with the lobster phone concept, and he hired Salvador Dali to make it come to life for real. Finally, after all those years of dreaming and envisioning his glorious lobster phone, just waiting for the opportunity to make it happen, the time had come. Salvador Dali got to work and he masterfully created a lobster from plaster and took an old working phone and sort of glued them together. The ingredients listed said that he used resin and paper, which sounds suspiciously like a fancy way of saying it's a paper mache lobster. But this is real art made by a real artist, not something a kindergartner could make with materials from his class. Or maybe that was Dali's whole point. We're all artists on the inside. Never give up on your dreams. Anyway, he made the lobster phone and it was an instant hit. It was such a big hit, in fact, that Dali was commissioned to make 10 more. Yeah, there are 11 lobster phones in existence, just sitting around making people question their life's choices. Even though these phones were all created in the 1930s, they're still all the rage and people will pay a high price to get their hands on them. In 2018, the white lobster telephone went up for sale at an auction. A mysterious unknown buyer won the auction and purchased it, planning to export the piece outside the United Kingdom. But the National Galleries of Scotland 
Scotland totally swiped the phone out from under the buyer. They convinced the UK government to block the export so that the museum could have enough time to raise the 850,000 pounds needed to snatch the auction win. The government itself then granted the majority of the money from the National Art Fund to the museum, allowing them to purchase the glorious plaster lobster telephone. It's a mystery who the other buyer was, but the only image that keeps playing through my head is a guy in a kimono flipping over a giant seafood table when his butler gives him the news that his girlfriend's birthday present was stolen by a museum. Wait, am I weird too? All I know is Salvador Dali probably would have been pretty happy with the weirdness of the whole situation. What do you think? Are there any other weird or interesting stories from history that you'd like me to share about? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video.